Hi everybody, Kim from Oz here, and today I'm going to do just a slightly different video. I'm going to take this brand new, well to me anyway, black Molden Pocket file effects, and I'm going to de-ring it. I'm going to customize it in a way that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Now, I found this on eBay a few months ago, and I've got the time now to uh, modify it. And as you can see, it's got the rings in there, and I was going to remove those and use it for a journal. And I've got a Moleskin grid book, which uh, I use uh, most of the time. Moleskin's my favorite uh, notebook, and I'm going to put it in because I need the room without the rings and um, the reason I've hesitated to do this was that although I like the leather and the feel of the Molden, the black Molden has a white contrasting stitching which although I guess it's traditional for this color leather it really didn't appeal to me and I just find the black and the white a little bit too opposite so what I've decided to do is, apart from de-ring this, is also to darken the stitching. So how do I do that? Well, um, not that difficult, but I, I'll get to that in a little while. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is set this up to de-ring the Molden Pocket. And uh, if you haven't seen the videos that I've done on this uh, earlier, um, please check those out. There's probably a little more detail, but um, I'll show a little bit of what to do and uh, let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is start with drilling the rings out. And if you look at the file effects, you'll see that it has two studs holding the ring mechanism in, one there and one there. And to do it, I just use an ordinary cordless screwdriver. Now, I don't want to uh, promote any products, but I find that this is a USB charging uh, drill. So I just plug it into my USB port in my computer and it can be used as a screwdriver or as a drill and just plug it in with a drill bit like so and turn it on and there it goes. So the way to do this is to just make sure you've got a lot of space and you're going to just drill in the stud around like so. So I'm just going to show you now. So start the drill and you're wearing away just the outside and you just use a circular motion to just wear away the edges of the stud like so and at the other side now I'll stop the camera and, and get into it now I'm doing it very quickly just to show you and I'll be back in a flash so I'm nearly through with this, so I'll just show you the last little part. And that's all you need. So once you've got that out, and you can see there's a little bit of the stud left on the drill, and just be careful with a little bit of safety, just make sure there's a small amount of metal that gets drilled out. So use uh, safety glasses to protect your eyes. But that takes the stud out and then it's literally just to give it a little bit of a nudge and a pull. And the rings just come out quite cleanly, like so. So we're gonna put that aside and then the second part of the de-ringing is to just remove these studs from the inside. Now you can leave them in, but for what I want to do, and I like the, the more bendy uh, center part, I want to remove it. So the quickest and easiest way that I found was to just place a small little slit in the bottom of the file effects here. Now you notice that there's no stitching at this base and the pocket part is here. Okay. Now the other part is you could also remove it from the inside here by putting a small slit. It's up to you. Um, you could even 
let's take it up through the hem there. So um, there's a few different ways. So I'm going to do that now and stop the video and then I'll be back in a moment. So what I've decided to do is to go on the underside, so the pockets on that side, I'm going to remove it from the underside and with a utility knife, just cut a slit on the inside because I think that I can, uh, you won't really see that. Now I've got to remember that this uh, binding has got a lot of glue on it and you've got to be a little bit rough with the file effects. And because it's well made, you won't hurt it too much. But very gently, you need to pry the center binding off, lifting up the studs like so. And you can cut through the fabric like so. And then basically just try and pull it down away from the opening stud and out it pops like so. Well, bent it a little bit. So now the rings are out and it's in reasonably okay shape. Just give it a little bit of a rub and if I check on the inside of the pocket it looks pretty good. Now to fix up the hole that I put there you just put a little bit of uh, glue on the inside and because that's the bottom of the pocket it should last quite well and I managed to cut just under this leather seam so it really really won't show too much as long as you glue it back up. So there we have it the rings are off and it's time to do some colouring in. So with the rings out it's time to colour it in. Now it's really not that difficult all we need to do is to just take out Sharpie and start coloring it in. You will get a little bit on the leather, so you've got to be careful about that. Go over it a few times, and as you can see, it's just taking in the ink and we'll take our time to start coloring it in. And with a little wave of video magic, this whole bit job will be done in a flash. And here it is, totally finished. So I'll just bring it up to show you. Now, of course, there's a bit of a glossy glare with the light, but if you look inside, the stitching has been reduced to dark. Now, one of the things that I found when I did this was that when I took the Sharpie, I made sure that the ink soaked into the cotton of the stitching, like so. So I held it. It's a bit of a slow process, but it's not that difficult and it didn't take me too long. I'm also aware that the stitching on high use areas such as the pen loop and also the clasp might need to touch up. It's a wait and see thing. What I did do was also just color in all the stitching that I would see on a regular usage basis. So of course underneath here I've just left that. I mean I could do it at a later point but at the moment the stitching has now darkened all over 
like so, and I'm pretty happy with that. So the next part for my journal is to place the Moleskine diary in here. So it's not a difficult job. Now I choose Moleskine because of the quality and uh, what they usually have is quite a large uh, bit of uh, stuff at the back, booklets about their products. Um, you can tell it's quite a, a good product because the quality control card which is there is, is this lovely printed card, not just a piece of paper that you might sometimes get in goods. Um, I won't need that so I'll just take that apart away and sometimes I do remove the back little pocket on there but what I find though is this gives the booklet just a little bit more strength and if you open up the book you'll see that it will slide in fairly well into the back pocket so I'll just push it in like so but you might find that it's a little bit stubborn. We don't want to crease the book. So unfortunately, we just have to make another slight modification of slicing just a small amount. And in this case, I'm just going to cut a very thin angle just on the top, like so. Not much at all. Just to let it slide in. A very small triangle. And then see if that works. If it doesn't, I'll do the same on the bottom. So you just have to modify it slightly and it should slide in. Let's have a look. The reason I want to keep the, the rubber band is so that when I'm finished, the rubber band will still be used to hold it together when I store it. So let's place the rubber band back on, place it in, be a little bit firm but gentle, and wedge it in like so, and there it is. So it's in the middle. And you can see that the whole studs are there. And they can come in handy if you want to place in a pencil. For instance, I found this really very slim line pencil, which is a, uh, you push the top and the lead comes out. And that can actually slide in quite easily into that hole, which I won't do now, but because it's such a slimline thing it won't take up a lot of room. But for this one I'm going to use just an ordinary Uniball Signo 0.38 pen, which fits into the pen loop quite well, like so, and holds quite well. So let's have a look at this, I'll just clear those things away. So here it is, my modified journal with the black stitching gone, ready to go, like so, and problem solved. Now, if you've noticed a couple of my other journals, and especially when I've shown ones with my regular carry, which has got this class, I can put one on, I won't do that for this video, but I am thinking of putting on something similar, and I've got a collection of clasps here. There's something probably just a little bit different, so I'm going to toy up between this one or this one, Journey, and that would probably be glued directly onto the clasp like that. So I haven't decided yet, but I have a feeling that probably will be the one. If not, I will modify the clasp and put that one on. So if you want to make a comment down below which one you think, the round one or the journey one, let me know. I'll try and show you at a later date. So there we have it. A modified, de-ringed and de-black stitched pocket mold and file effects, which is now a journal with a moleskine grid notebook. Thanks for watching, and this is Kent from Oz saying see you on another video.